Hello everyone, it's Marion Wallace with Restoring Ghettos Forgotten. And uh, today I have another conversational piece and it's basically about, and it's for the young parents out there. Uh, young parents that are in their 20s and early 30s. And this is just a word of encouragement for you guys because I know, you know, it's not easy being a young parent because you're trying to balance your personal life with you know having a child and being a responsible adult and that's not easy and a lot of times I know sometimes we feel like it feels as though you have to give your whole life up for your child and you know what I want to be the first to say you're right I want to be the first to say you're right because our number one goal as parents is to put our children before our own needs, period. Once you decided to, to lay down and procreate and have a child, your life, your life is after. You have to think about yourself after you've met the needs of your child or your children, period. And this is coming from an elder. You know, I should be considered an elder to my, you know, to my young sisters and brothers that's in their, their uh, 20s, early 20s, and early 30s even. You know, I'm, I'm an elder. I've been here so many years. God has blessed me to be on this earth. And one thing God did not short me on was wisdom. Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect because I'm not. I'm still in a, a process of growth. Each and every year, I challenge myself to be a better person than I was the previous year. So I don't need anyone pointing out my shortcomings. Trust me, I do that enough. I'm what you call a Virgo. And under that, that sign, uh, we tend to be really, really hard on ourselves. We're harder on ourselves than we are other people. And I know a lot of people take Virgos as being judgmental. But you got to understand that we're going to be a lot harder and more judge judgmental on, on ourselves than we are the people around us and if you have a, a, a Virgo on your team that's pushing you and challenging you find you find yourself and you should find yourself in good company because they're not gonna tell you or encourage you to grow and be better and not do that themselves they're doing twice as much that you know you think they're doing to you they're doing more to themselves that's just the type of nature we have we're always we want to be in a growth progression in our lives we always want to get better do better and that's just who we are it can be very annoying at times i admit it uh virgos are very op optimistic people virgos are very intuitive people some, some of us and so we can look at a person and see their potential and see how beautiful they are on the inside even if they are a little calloused on the outside we can kind of tell if that person is overall innately good and so when we see that in a person we'll challenge them we'll challenge them to be better and i know that it could be annoying at times because you don't always want somebody in your ear but that person is investing in you because they may see something in you you don't even see in yourself so don't always be so down on the person that's constantly pouring into you they're not if they're not tearing you down all the time and they're always trying to build you up there has to be a balance though so they're not going to always sing your praises sometimes they're going to call you on your stuff and you have to take an introspective look a retrospective look at yourself and say you know hey am i really being that way you know is that really how i come across because I question myself a lot. If somebody comes to me and say, hey, you know, I don't really like how you coming at me or I don't like when you did this or did that. I'll take that person's, um, you know, that, that person's response to me and I'll really think about it. And I'll think about, okay, is it me or is it them? And if they're right, if more than one person has told me that I, I beha behave in that manner, then that means if I value that relationship, if I want their relationship to grow and be nourished and be something, then I'm going to value them enough to say, hey, I'm going to change that about myself because I value our relationship and you're important to me. 
that's what relationships and being mature is about it's about valuing another person's opinion of you if they're coming from a good place and if you have discernment you'll know if they're coming from a good place or not you may not want to hear it because there's plenty of times when people told me stuff about me that i needed to fix i didn't want to hear it but i took you know i really took into account of what they were saying and i started to soul search and then i saw in my in my own ways where i was toxic where I needed to fix those things about myself so that I can have healthy whole relationships. And so I did what I had to do. I did my work. This video is about, again, young parents. I know it's not hard. Um, and it's really hard when you still have emotional issues or things you haven't dealt with from your childhood to try to bring another childhood with that another child with that mindset so we have to look within ourselves and change within ourselves and stop putting the blame on other people especially people that are in your corner see this is how the and i'm going to explain something to y'all this is how the enemy works the enemy knows what god has in store for you the enemy knows that he's already seen a peek at it so he wants to stop you in any way he can and so just like the enemy knows god already knows because he's already prepared it for you so he's gonna put people in your corner that's gonna push you that's gonna challenge you they're gonna be like sandpaper they're gonna be just sanding away at all the dirt and the grime and all the unforgiveness all the the, the jealousy all the strife all the stuff that makes us unbearable people He's going to put people in your life to, to be that sandpaper, to get all that junk off of you so you can reveal the true beauty of yourself, of who you are as a real person. So God's going to put those people in your life. Now, this is how the enemy works. The enemy is very, very, very calculative. So he's going to constantly try to pull those people away from you that God sent or God is using to help elevate you. Yeah, he's going to do that. So he's going to help. He's going to always help you find a fence in that person that was sent to help elevate you to where you're going to just stop talking to them or you don't want to be around them or you don't want to listen to them because they're your sandpaper. They're who God sent or who God has assigned to you at that at that particular point in your life to elevate you to bring you higher and it's not a comfortable uh, feeling all the time if you spend your whole life in comfort you ain't doing you're not living your purpose you're not living your purpose you're not growing you're at a standstill God likes to get us uncomfortable so that we can grow so that we can deal with ourselves and so I may be a little bit off course here, but I, I wanted to go all the way back to being a young parent and having those integral people, those foundational people in your children's lives, like grandparents and like a grandmother and a grandfather and, and uncles and aunties to be there to help groom this young child because it really does take a village for every woman out there or any man out there that think they can raise their child alone you're kidding yourself that child is missing important parts of their culture important parts of their foundation when it's only one person doing one person doing everything because there's going to be something that that one person is going to miss it's always i mean we don't know it all there's something that we may be missing. That's why it takes a village to raise one child. Don't ever think, don't ever get so independent, ladies, that you feel like you don't need anybody to help you. And, and let me define help. Because a lot of women will have a man in their life or of the father. And because they feel the father isn't doing enough, they say, oh, I do everything. Stop lying. I don't care if that man gives you a hundred dollars a month you're not doing everything by yourself i don't care if he's only paying half of the daycare hell i wish i had somebody to help me pay half of the daycare when i needed it i didn't have that so whenever a man is really trying to give you his best or the best that he has within him appreciate it take it and i'm not saying ever be satisfied because if you see him growing and he's 
getting better and doing better of course you want him to help out a little bit more but if you see that he's honestly trying and ladies young you know i can't stress this enough we cannot change men we cannot change men at all so the same man you met whatever what, young man that you met in your life and whatever he was doing at the moment if he hasn't done any real work on himself, what would make you think that child would change that man and make him more responsible? I'll never understand that. Why do we think that way? Why do we think a baby would solidify the relationship, would make the relationship better, would make the man grow up? If that man got stuff he still need to deal with, he gonna be the same immature boy that he was when he first met you, even with the baby. So we fail ourselves when we think, Oh, you know, I'm finna get this, you know, this man or I'm gonna have a baby and that's gonna change him. And he's gonna love me. And he's gonna love this kid and we're gonna be a big happy family and we're gonna get married and all these wonderful things. No, not. A man has to grow up. He has to figure out who he is and whose he is. He has to do his work too if he hasn't had, had the best upbringing. And some people can have the best upbringing. I mean, they can have a great mother and a father and still choose to go left. So not all the time it's about your upbringing, it's about your choices. We need to be responsible for our own choices and don't hold nobody else accountable for it. So this video is not gonna be long because I've made it to my destination and I have to get in here in this class and then I'm going on my way to the office. So I don't never have a lot of time, but I wanted to shoot this uh, quick video for the young parents out there, just to kind of encourage you, but I wanna bring some um some knowledge to the game because you guys have it wrecked right now it is wrecked you guys have the nerve to go off and have children and leave them on the grandparents and get an attitude when the grandparents tell you your slip hanging they tell you you ain't doing what you're supposed to do as a parent you got to get mad at them because they trying to tell you you ain't doing what you need to do now, however many years that parent has on you, that's wisdom. They done been there, done that, lived that. So if they can help you avoid some of that, why not? That's what this video is about. You lay down, you had that kid. You decided that's what you wanted. Cause some of y'all, it wasn't no accident. Let's be real, ladies. It wasn't no accident. You knew exactly what you was doing when you when you laid there and had unprotected sex with that brother. You knew you wanted his child, even though he done showed you so many red flags before that. So you are just as accountable as he is for being, if he's not a so-called good father, you're just as ac accountable because you knew who he was before you laid down with him. Now you have to take accountability and he has to take accountability grow up and you got to grow up quick now because you got you got a kid or you got children so you need to grow the hell up do your work and stop blaming other people because at the end of the day the child is gonna suffer y'all don't want to hear the word suffer well that's what children do every freaking day when they live on the unres people that are not responsible parents they suffer they go stay with tom dick and harry you don't know who helping you raise your children. You don't know what kind of morals they have inside of them that they are planting in your children while you go off and live your best life. They're suffering. When you leave them with a child molester, they're suffering. This is the real. When you feel like you're too freaking selfish to say, okay, I'm gonna calm down. I'm not gonna go out every weekend so I can make sure I'm keeping my own kid and I'm protecting my kid. But you too damn selfish. You want to go out and live your best life and show your ass. Let's be real. Meanwhile, you don't know who's at home, wherever you done left your kid, what they're doing to your child. They're suffering. They're suffering, ladies, when you get an attitude with your child's father because you don't think he's doing enough. Then you keep him away from his, his you keep the child away from the father or the, the father's family. These kids are suffering. It takes a village. We cannot live that YOLO lifestyle. You only live once when you have children. If you wanna live, live the YOLO lifestyle, don't have no kids.
You can be as wild and carefree as you want to be. Morally corrupt, because that's all that's going on. Would you want your little girl to do some of the things that you do when you go to the club? Or when you go to wherever you go to do your dirt? Would you want her following your example? Well, if not, that lets you know. It's not about you anymore, brother or sister. It's about your child. It's about rearing them into something. It's about our legacy, leaving a legacy. And what kind of legacy are we gonna leave if all of our kids are traumatized? They traumatized because their parents didn't give a, um, didn't care enough to put themselves last so that they can raise and rear their children in a healthy, happy home. And so now they got to be traumatized like we were in our childhood because we around Tom, Dick and Harry, these people are damaging and hurting our children and taking their innocence all because we want our freedom. You should have thought about that. You had every opportunity. Girl, you know, you know, I like to, uh, I like to do my thing, girl. You know, I like to have fun. You know, I like my freedom. You know, I like different men. You know, I, I can't be tied down. If you know that's your personality, why in the world would you not protect yourself and not have a kid so you can keep being ratchet? I'm going to call it what it is. It's ratchetness. Why, why in the world would you not protect yourself so you couldn't so you don't have any children and bring them into that same ratchetness and you teach them how to be even more ratcheter if that's a word because our kids do in an um abundance more than what we do they do more they want to they want to top it so why stop procreating stop breeding stop having children if you refuse to grow the hell up and be a mature mother or father. Just stop it. Make him wrap it up. You get on birth control, whatever. Whatever you gotta do, but stop procreating. You're, you are a parent now, it's not about you anymore. I'm sorry, it's not. If, you, if you're able to take a little time off with, at, when you're a single parent, then, then that, that really, that, that needs to be celebrated because nine times out of 10, it's not about you anymore. People are not going to take time out from work to watch your responsibility while you go out and live your best life. People are not going to do that. They may give you a little time out, but they don't have to give you that because you laid down. You decided to have that kid. That's your responsibility, not theirs. So this is for the young parents out there. I'm telling you guys to grow up, do your work. Forgive whoever hurt you in your childhood. Forgive yourself. Grow yourself up. If you know you have emotional issues that you haven't dealt with, deal with them. Because you're going to keep getting the same result, doing the same thing the same way. So it's time for us to deal with ourselves. No more pity parties. No more excuses. No more, no more blame. Because our children are suffering. We hate the word suffering, but they are. That's facts. They're suffering. It's time for us to grow up. Again, I'm going to say bye. A lot of times my stuff is not, I mean, it's never going to be sugar-coated. But even if I'm, if I'm touching a tough topic, I do it because I love my people. I do it because I know we are good people. We're strong. We're creative. We're, we're intelligent people. And we can do, <clears throat> I'm sorry, my allergies. We can do so much more with our lives if we put the cell phone down sometimes, if we stop scrolling the lives of this world and actually start participating in our own life. We can actually do something positive, make a positive impact, leave our footprint on the earth. But we can't do that being like the rest of the crowd, fitting in and doing all this unnecessary ass ratchetness it's not going to bring any wealth to you. It's not going to it's not going to help you raise your children correctly. It's just putting you out in a bad light. And it's time for us to grow up. And when I say ratchetness, I'm not just talking about uh the the women. I'm talking about the men too. Brothers, y'all ratchet too. Y'all go out and have two and three different little girls pregnant at the same time and got a job to first. Don't know how you're going to support the kid. 
but you clean though. From head to toe, you got on designer from head to toe, your baby ain't got no pampers. Y'all ratchet too. It's time for us to grow up. It's time for us to come together and co-parent. First of all, we need to slow the hell down and watch who we jumping in the bed with because you might be jumping in the bed with a psycho that may one day take your life. So slow down enough to learn if this person got all their scruples or if they off the rocker because it's happening every day and men are killing women. And all we do, we want that self-gratification. We want whatever we want from them because half the time they don't do that. But whatever we want from them, we, gotta, we have to slow down long enough to get to know these men to see if they're really men. We need to see who raised these men. We need to uh, court. That's an old word, but we need to start courting. But we need to court without the sex all the time. Because once you put sex in the in the picture, it will it'll just take it in a direction that is premature. And it'll make you bypass a lot of the red flags because you're already kind of creating soul ties with a person that may be crazy a person that may not be for you so if we slow down long enough and if we feel like we can't slow down use protection stop procreating and breeding and having these children that you dumping off on your parents and the moment they call your shit what it is you get mad at them and, and, and you act like a big ass kid everything that they trying to tell you you're doing you validate it by how you respond to what they're telling you you don't even realize it. Learn how to con control your emotions, handle your emotions, take care of your business. If you got a kid, it's not about you anymore. It's not about their grandparents. It's not about their aunties or uncles. It's about you being a responsible parent. Us coming together, of course, as a community to raise this one child. But the moment one of your elders step to you and, t and pull you and tell you what you're doing wrong and you lash out, you, there's no growth in that you can't grow you're just determined that you're gonna put yourself first all the time and i'm telling you now our children are suffering or we do we hear them that's my question it's not about you anymore it was about you before you had that kid if you wanted to live your goals dreams and aspirations and i ain't saying you got to give them up but i'm saying you got to put your responsibility first and then everything else comes after. So this is for the young parents. I want you guys to know that you can do this, but you have to have a foundation. Your foundation has to be God. Then it has to be your prayer life. Then it has to be your priorities. And, and well, I should put mental health. It has to be your mental health is important. Just like them, uh, I don't know how much y'all spend on tennis shoes anymore, but some people may spend a thousand dollars on a pair of sneakers or more. But just like your, you know, your kicks need to be fresh. Well, guess what? Your mental health need to be on point. Invest into that. See, I get tired of us saying we can't afford to go to counseling or we can't afford to deal with our, our traumas or whatever the case may be. When we got on maybe, I don't know, a $10,000 outfit. You know, some people really do it big. They living with their parents, but they do it big. You know? So I'm saying if we can afford to do that, we can afford to go and sit down and talk to somebody and work through the stuff that we have internally. Forget the external stuff. That don't mean nothing when you raggedy on the inside, you raggedy on the outside. People can tell. All you got to do is open your mouth or show them your emotions or show them how you respond to other people. They already know you raggedy. Girl, he, he got that nice car. Or he got those clean clothes, but he raggedy, girl. He can't even control his emotions. Same with women. She beautiful. She got that, that nice figure. She done had her whole body done from head to toe. And I don't understand that, ladies. Y'all got to respond to this, this video when you get a chance. Why are our 20-year-old daughters getting their whole bodies done from head to toe? I'm not understanding that. Like, that's when you're at your best in your 20s your body is the tightest it's the firmest you're in your natural state why are we taking what god give us and we're mutilating it and making it to an image of what social media says beauty should be i'm not understanding that that for one that for one is wrong we don't love ourselves anymore 
we don't value ourselves. It's time for us to, to start back loving ourselves just as we are and valuing ourselves so that we can teach our kids how to love and value themselves. I done did 25 minutes. I got to go in here. I'm already late. But I wanted to say this is for all the young parents out there. It's time. Once you become a parent, it's no longer about you or your fun. Period. I had to get that. When I was younger, I had to get it. I had to sit my ass down. I had to get it. Uh, maybe I didn't want to get it, but I had to get it. I had to sit down, calm down, figure out how I was going to take care of these children and be a responsible mother. So I sit my behind down. I went back to school. I studied hard. I worked hard. And I put the best example forward, the best that I could, and even in my trauma, because I still hadn't dealt with my trauma yet. I still put myself last and did what I had to do to be a better mother. So it can be done. We just have to want to do it. We just can't be selfish. We have to put ourselves behind us and raise these children the best that we can. And, and the, num the most important thing is leading by example because they're watching us, they're listening to us, they're mimicking everything with, that we do. So we need to be cautious of that. And I want to encourage you. And I'm not saying that once you become a parent, your life is over. I mean, for some of us, it was. I'm not saying that it has to be for you because if you got a supportive family system, okay, you done worked or went to school for two, three months straight and you haven't had a break, you decide you want to go on a trip with your friends, then your, your family more than likely will help you. But your family's not going to help you if you got to take a break every weekend because real parents don't get breaks that's you know we decided to be parents so people don't have to accommodate you so you can go live your best life you decided to have that kid i keep saying that over and over because i'm trying to bring it home you decided now some people they were put into situations maybe they that was beyond their will but i say as long as you have as long as you weren't raped when you freely laid down with that person and 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 had sex with that person you know it was a chance unprotected sex that you could get pregnant then it's on you too you're just as liable as the father both you guys are and so because you make that conscious decision to do that then now it's your responsibility to, to, to deal with the consequences of raising this kid meaning you may not get a whole bunch of free time until they're 18 years old and then guess what they still come back home so you never stop being a parent. That's why this is even for people that haven't had any kids yet. They may even be thinking about it because I know it was some years back. It was girls actually competing with each other who could get pregnant first. I'm like, who, the, who does that? I'm trying not to curse. I haven't been fully delivered from that yet. Y'all bear with me. So I'm trying here. But when I get passionate, it comes out because I feel like don't nobody... Un, you know people don't try to understand or respect you unless you just bringing it home and for most people you got to cuss them out but i don't know why you just do for them to understand you mean business you got to cuss them out so but i'm working on that with myself so y'all bear with me but again i'm going to cut this short it's already been 28 minutes i got to get in the gym but i wanted to 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 bring this video because we all need to know at the end of the of the day it's all about the children if the children are our future and we're putting our future our children last we're putting the future last and that's why we're lagging so far behind you don't believe me research we're lagging we're failing our children it's time for us to grow up y'all it's time for us to grow up um yeah it's time for us to grow all that being entitled that that sense of entitlement like your parents have to do something for you kill that nobody got to do nothing for you once you're grown you you pretty much can be on your own now if your parent if your parents decide to help you out along the way they want to see some growth they want to see you growing and moving so if you're at home with a kid they want to see you either going to school or you're working and you have goals and you have aspirations and you're building a future for you and your child that's what they want to see 
They don't want to see you at the same, every year they look at you, you in their home, you at that same level. They want to see some growth. And that'll make them feel like they're contributing to you being a successful adult. So again, just try to hear what I'm saying. I know that I'm probably annoying the hell out of the, the young parents, but it has to be said, you guys. And I hope that you allow these seeds to be planted so that you can understand it's not about you anymore, it's about your child. And when you think of your child, think about the future as a whole, what the future is gonna look like if we all fail our children. Think about that. Peace, I love you guys. Take care of yourselves. Remember that everybody that uses corrective criticism does not hate you. Actually, they may love you more than the person that's celebrating your crap because they mean you well. So think about that before you denounce the person that's challenging you to be a better person. I love you, take care, bye-bye, see y'all later.